I'm excited about this. Going out to do a little night fishing in Sturgeon Bay. Got our good friend Scott from Rebel with us, the Tubble Towel Man. Just got a tour of Lonnie's facility here. You know, when you think about like, unbelievable when you look at this facility, all the storage units he's got. He's got a couple huge shops that he rents out. He's even got one that's open now. If you guys are looking for a big shop up in Sturgeon Bay, it's got four doors. I don't even know how many square feet that thing is. It's big, it's got a lot of room. But look at storage, storage. It's even got an awesome house that he rents out right here. So yeah, it's pretty cool. You know, it's cool to see somebody take a chance, right? Take a chance and, and start another business up and keep your guiding business going too. You know what, that's what it's all about. Hey, it's gonna be a perfect night tonight. We're gonna have a salt wind. The walleye fishing up on the bay here all summer has been very sporadic. But these fish, now that we're turning into fall here, these fish really, this night bite really turns on. And I'll tell you something, it is a great bite. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start off trolling. And again, we got a crack at a big fish. That's the cool part about coming up to this part of the bay up here in Sturgeon Bay, is that you have always got a chance at that just absolutely mega giant. So hopefully today, tonight we see a bunch of fish. I'd like to have a fish fry myself. And hopefully we hook into a couple of big fish. So you guys, hope you guys learn a lot and have a lot of fun, and that's what it's all about. So you guys, hang on to your heinies. We'll be right back. It's a perfect night. Kind of nice to put some clothes on too, right? Love these cool conditions. That's what it's all about. Fall is definitely in the air. Oh, hang on. What's in the air? A slightly used hanger. Hey, Lonnie, I'll tell you, you know what? When it comes to night fishing, it's no doubt this time of year can be extremely productive. Like this time of year, you're bass fishing pretty heavy too. And we did that with you several times. I got my personal best, bass, biggest bass with you, smallmouth. I think it was 6'2", 6'4", just an absolutely giant. But night bite, night fishing up here can be extremely good. It can be, you know, and that's just it. We don't have the, we have the gin clear water here. We don't have stained water. So I think that's another upside to fishing at night up here in Sturgeon Bay is the clear water. These fish just get a little more active at night. And, and let's face it, these walleyes have built in night vision. They can see really good at dark, just as good as the day. Day they get a little, uh, you know, lethargic, cumbersome, and then at night they kind of get active and they're actively looking for bait. And uh, up in, in Door County with this gin clear water, they can really see good at night. And my prediction again, folks, is I'm gonna predict that we are gonna have a super cold winter, and you can hold me to this, and it's gonna be a long winter. And that's what I wanna see, because ice fishing, no doubt, is one of my favorite times of year to enjoy it and to have good, safe ice, we are due for it. And I just, you know, when you look at all the signs of nature, you know what, if we don't have a cold winter this year, something's really messed up. Hey, you guys, hang on to your heinies. We'll be right back. Here we go. Now, Scotty, this is how you do it, right? You don't wind it through all the other lines when it's dark out, right? On my side, the outside, which is rare. We'll take that first fish of the night. Nice. Nice eater. Woo hoo. There we go, heck yeah. Good job. Here we go, Lon. All right, good deal. First. First fish, perfect fish, about 18, 20 inches. Realized that uh, we had a bunch of moss on there. We went through some area and uh, our baits were all plugged up and we caught that last one on the outside and typically that's not the best side. Now we just adjust everything, put a couple new baits in, cleaned everything up and it is time for another fish. Low and slow is what we always tell the customers, right? Low and slow. 
Don't see him yet, Lonnie. Oh, there he is right there. Nice fish right there. Loving it. Bingo! In the old netaroni. Yep. Yeah, buddy. Nice, there we go. You know, it makes a big difference when you keep them baits clean and they're not all plugged up with weeds. And uh, boy, that fish popped off right away. You know, again, it's one of them kind of things where, you know what, you just kind of got to adapt. You know, a year like this year, or the fish in October, November, it just, that night bite can just be a tremendous time to come out here and do it. Perfect right there. All right, another one for the box. There you go, Scotty. Well, this is a fish right here, so. Slow her down, it's a nice one. Ooh, that's a nice fish. Nice. Oh, pop right off, right away. There you go. Nice fish, things are happening now. A little bit of an adjustment right there. That's all it took and game on. You know what's interesting now, that's two walleyes on the outside right there. And again, just kind of, we brought them baits way up. Uh, you know, we're only in anywhere from eight to 14 feet of water, basically trolling about 1.4 to 1.7 and just making a straight run. Yep, there you go, Scotty. Right. I'll get this one out of your way. Sounds like a plan. Well, and he's checking his side right there. Again, you go a half hour, nothing. Definitely check your baits. We're using seven and a half foot rods. You're using 10 pound test XT line and uh, just works out really good. You got a net for me, Lano? Yep. Bring them right up here if you can. Nice job, Scotty. Pop right off, that's perfect. Hold that one up. You know, it's interesting now, that's three fish on the outside and typically that is not where your bite is at. Usually it's on the insides. Right now, uh, you know, it's running close to about 10 o'clock, so it'll be interesting. We're gonna, we're gonna fish her hard tonight, folks, I'll tell you that. I caught that one on, uh, or Scotty caught that one on the second board out, so I'm gonna quick, we're coming up to a really good area. I'm gonna wind my other two outside ones in check them for weeds just to make sure when we come through them hot spots that we're not all plugged up with weeds on here. You know, it's not to the point where the weeds are thick enough where we need to run like a split shot or a bigger swivel ahead of that bait three, four feet to kind of stop them weeds. Um, it's just a, a little bit of floating debris we ran across in two different spots now and uh, it was short lived. That bait doesn't look too bad. There's a little bit of stuff on the front right there and that is about it. Again, you know what? Running, you know, the right rods, running the right baits, running the right speed, you know, that's the key to everything. And just keep adjusting what you're doing. You know, if one thing's not working and you have confidence that them fish are in that area, obviously don't get too lackadaisical. You know what, start changing your baits, start changing the speed, do something different to get them fish to bite. Lonnie, you get them. There we go. That second board again on that outside. You know, I'm running that about 30 feet back and I got it up pretty high. And that's, for some reason, they want that. We might have to put another one of them colors on there. Give them what they want. That's the name of the game when it comes to fishing, folks. Give them what they want. It's kind of nice, Larry. You got that outside break going. There's a secondary break. There's a first primary break and it comes out and goes to a secondary break and you're right on that edge. Yeah, I mean, so really, why do you think them fish are hanging so tight on it? Because I've done this bite with you been plenty of other times when we haven't filmed it. And most of the time that inside, all the inside boards, especially the two that are closest up the shore are the hottest ones. And now that so far tonight, that has not been the case. Well, I think it's flat calm. Those fish ain't quite pushing in yet. They're on that secondary break, just moving in, and uh, that's good stuff. Perfect shot. Ooh, that's a nice fish. Lift up. And... Yep, nice job. There you go, Lon. Yeah. On nice that fish. perfect fish. These are nice eaters, Larry. About 21, 22 inches. Good eater. Pretty do gold Door County fish. 
Got to love that, Lonnie. You got that secondary brake going, buddy. Good job. Yeah, oh, pink lemonade, that's a hot color, too. Larry, there's so much to be said about boat control, man. That That's what makes your night so successful. It is. You know, and that that is a key thing, Lonnie. It's great when you have, that you know, three guys the in the boat, and you got one guy basically just taking turns driving and keeping that boat right where it needs to be. Again, especially when you're running such a, a tight brake like you have here. Perfect fish right there. Again. Voila! Nice yeah! Nice. <laughs> Loving that. A little bit of a tangle there, not too bad. Keep the line tight all the time. Another one on here, guys. We're on a roll now. Yeah, baby. it is. <laughs> there she is. Oh, whoa, 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 little girl. Didn't like that. He didn't like that, doesn't like all that light on him. Oh, 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 you swam right in the right direction, my friend. We still haven't found that big concentration. You know, obviously the bite is definitely turning on. Right now it's probably about 10, 15, 10, 20. Um, you know, it's pretty cool because, again, when you're looking at the weather, it's nice and cool out. You know, we got a light breeze going here and uh, the fish are definitely coming on. Hey everybody, this week's tip of the week brought to you by our good friends up at Mike's Country Meats, the finest jerky on the planet. Hey, you know what, if you're like me and you can't stand when you jam all your rods into your rod storage areas, when you go to pull them out, that they're always tangled up, I got two simple ways to keep your rods from getting beat up and it makes it a lot faster to pull them rods out. And you know what? And one thing that's real simple is you can just buy these rod sleeves. And I'll tell you what, you can go on Amazon or any of the great bait shops. You can go to Dick Smith's and buy them there. But these rod sleeves are about five bucks a piece. And I'll tell you what, when you think about this, when you got, especially when we use all the Meg's custom rods, you know what? What is spending another $5 to protect that rod from getting all beat up? Hey, the other part is, is that to use a hair clip like this right here, this really is a simple, inexpensive way to keep your baits from getting tangled up when you do put your rod sleeves over that so the hooks don't tangle in them. Real simple. Hey, again, this week's tip of the week brought to you by our good friends up at Mike's Country Meats, the finest jerky on the planet. You take the remote. You are. Oh, okay. I'll just let it run. Yeah. You got a good one on, hey? Yeah. Yeah. Boat. Who's boat driving boat. a boat? I am. Oh, now he's uh -oh. off. Here's a little bit of reality, right? You know what? A little miss, well, I don't know, misfortune, but uh, the trolling motor went absolutely berserk. We were fighting a fish and spun us right around. We couldn't shut it off in time. We ended up pulling the plug on it. And uh, look what we have here. We got lines in every direction. We got lines in the trolling motor. Scotty, what's Scotty doing up there? Oh, <laughs> we, right? just did a, uh, we just did a 360. About three times. Three, three, six, <laughs> through the line. line. Right? So look at this mess we have here. Cruise control. <laughs> just gonna go straight. Ain't acting like it. We gotta get one in the boat. We kinda hit some bad luck here. Ding 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 After our major catastrophe. <laughs> Big porker. That one will definitely let go. Big fish here. That is a nice fish. Again, there's a lot more challenges at night, you know, and we're pretty lucky tonight. Again, you know, it's pretty calm out and, uh, you know, there you go, a nice fat fish. Woo! On the outside again. Hey, Larry, we got one here. Okay, just checking this one. Just caught that one line. I'll take this one. 
There's Shut my up. We just got that one there. Here, you got this right here. Yep, got that. I'll switch you here, buddy. You want to put a waypoint in there? Because that was almost a double on this spot right yeah. here. I'll tell you what, Larry, that's crazy. Just keeping them boards clean and, uh, you know, working together. Bad. We had a little bit of a, a mess up back there, but yeah. kind of got them back in. actually kind of fun, you know. <laughs> bang, bang. Gives you something to laugh about, something to talk about. Oh, yeah. Working together. Yeah, it feels like a good fish line. It feels like a really good fish. Oh, no way. Whitefish? Yes. A rock bass. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> oh, it's my turn. I get a rock bass. What the H-E double two fix is going on here? At least it's a fat rock bass. It's a big fat rock bass. Right. Hey, I'll tell you what I was doing. I took the shiver spoon and was just bouncing it off the back here. And I definitely got something that's got some weight to it. Yeah. What you got on there, Larry? Big fish? Oh, I got a big fish for sure. Look at the Mag's custom rod <laughs> rocking, hey? Big old drumster. Yeah. The old drumster in the old back. Oh, the you. old back. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I was hoping for a big one. It's, it's almost like the days when you had a Harley and you were waving to the guy on a bike. You see another warrior on the water, you just get a good feel. First class all the way from the people that ride them to the people that make them. They do such a nice job with communication. They'll pick up the phone anytime. It's, it's really almost a friendship. You could be in any state and when somebody with a warrior drives by you, you get that honk, that beep. You're truly part of a family and there's nothing like it. There's one. Oh, there we go. Got the old shiver metal. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, look at that thing. <laughs> I love it. Absolutely great, great products. Shotgun in the kitchen. Lear meets lunchtime. I'm going old school. Bluegills on the bone. I scaled them, left the skin on. I seared them a little bit, skewered them, I mean, with the knife. I have Leroy meats, lemon pepper seasoning on them. Let's go outside and visit the grill. Shotgun back in the kitchen after being on the grill. You guys, this recipe is super easy. Like I said, you can tell it's done when it just peels apart like this. Look at the flakes coming off. Look at that. It's all fresh, nice bluegill meat. Shotgun in the kitchen, Leroy meats, lemon pepper, bluegills. Yeah, that's a fish call. You guys didn't know that? The yeah, snoring is the fish call? That's your fish call for snoring is... You want to get that inside one? I'm so we don't... <laughs> yeah, no. Well, this, is, this has got some... Look at that back of that board. When they're sunk like that, I like that feeling. You're always better off just doing a straight wind. Do not pump that rod when you're bringing them fish in. All you do is loosen that, that lip up wherever they're hooked. Nice big wall. That's a nice one. Good job, Larry. Look yeah. at that size of that walleye, buddy. Boy, yeah, buddy. Go. Yeah, baby. Woo! Oh, and it popped right off. You see that? If I would have pumped that rod at all, that fish would have came off because as soon as he hit the net, boom, that, there was only one little piece of that hook on there. And again, you know, when you're trolling like that, especially with planer boards or anytime, you never want to pump that rod back and forth. This nice and steady. It's almost like the fish doesn't even know that you're pulling them in. That's definitely the key when it comes to getting big fish for sure. Awesome right there. You got to love that right there. Nice fish. Lano, let's give her about 15 more minutes yeah, and pack buddy. her up and on the way home we go. Oh yeah, baby. Oh, uh, hooked oh, up, hooked, hooked up. up. Here we up. go. We were just go, pulling everything in to call it a night. And you know what? The big guy upstairs says, hey, I'm going to give you one more fish. Nice one. <laughs> yeah, what a great way to yeah, end it. Thanks, buddy. Lano. Good job, yes, buddy. indeed. Good job, Look at Larry. that. Yep. Hey, and we didn't do it tonight. 
because we really never found these fish concentrated. But I'll tell you what, if you're the kind of guy that's, that's like me, I don't mind trolling, but I love to cast shiver minnows and shiver spoons, and this is a perfect opportunity to do it. It always makes it a lot easier when you find these big concentrations. It seemed like tonight that these fish, we covered a lot of miles of shoreline and we never found any big concentration of walleyes. They were all just so scattered. So it makes it a lot tougher to sit and cast for them. But there is a lot of times where that shiver minnow or that shiver spoon is definitely key and it's a lot of fun. Hey Lonnie, you know, fishing at night is definitely, there's a few challenges. And as you guys could see tonight, we had a little glitch with the trolling motor as we were winding in a fish, you know what? And that kind of stuff happens, but you know, to really come out and efficiently fish at night, you know what, it always pays to have good lights. And you know, we use a lot of Milwaukee's, they're not a sponsor of ours, but you know, they have so many great different types of lights. I love their headlamps, you know what, they're rechargeable. They last a long time. I've had uh, these for probably about, probably about going on four years now and not an issue with them. But you know, using great planer boards is a big thing. I love the church boards because of the easy release in the back right here and the clip system on it. They run really good. Hey everybody, if you're looking at doing some great fishing this fall, make sure you give Lonnie a call. And Lonnie, let's tell everybody how they can get a hold of you. Yeah, just uh, you know, give me a call, uh, 920-304-0282, or you can text me at that number, or just check our website out at www.greenbaytrophyfishing. I got a contact page on there, but yeah, we got some excellent fall fishing coming up. I run two boats. Or, uh, and then I've got another guy in the weekend, so we run a three boat operation. So if I'm full, I can get you out. But when this water temperature starts to cool, the fishing is gonna be absolutely amazing and it's really starting to get there now. So, so you're looking for smallmouth or walleye? Smallmouth or walleye. And uh, it, we fish all of Door County, Sturgeon Bay, Washington Island, wherever we need to go to get on the fish, we'll, we'll make it happen. Take advantage of today because you do not, you do not know if you're gonna be here tomorrow. Hey, we appreciate everybody watching our show this week. You know what? We always want to thank all of our military men and women for the great service they have given this country and continue to give this country, along with all of our firefighters and paramedics and no doubt all of our law enforcement agents. Hey, the best part is I'm going to see you guys and gals again next week, and thanks for joining us. Yep. You drive? Yeah, I'll drive. Where's the... Well, you're the one that wanted it. I'm pulling you better not mess it up. I'm pulling right in the water. Got he? Oh, we got a little something going on here. Slow down. Slow down, Slow down. nice and easy Slow. yet. Guys start getting tired at the end of the night, then nice walleye. Yep, get them through. Really the nice walleye. Oh, yeah. No, no final words. Sleep.